Hi, it's Johnny again. I've took the white coat off. It's a bit warm for it. I've come up to the top of the garden in what I call my casting shed, where I do all the grinding and welding and casting. And what little bit of woodwork I do, I've got some woodworking tools. I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to build a dividing head for my box for a lathe. I've got a book here. The book's called Young as Lathe by Elliot Sparry. I would recommend anybody that's got an interest in model engineering or machining or lathes to buy the book. It's got an article in there <coughs> on making a dividing head. The dividing head he made is for a Mayfad ML7. I'm going to make the same dividing head slightly larger to fit my box pad lid. Um, I'm going to make a couple of castings. You could fabricate around. I'm going to do some. I'm going to make some patterns. Do some castings. The idea of the corner here is we're going to try and make the make the wooden patterns to cast the the base, and another pattern to cast the piece where the uh, change wheels go on anyway I don't like wood but I'll show you how I, how I go on making pans the first thing I want to talk about is wood this is the sort of wood I use it's actually oak it's top of a set of old oak shelves, very old uh, a bit of mahogany there you can get scraps of wood from joiner shops what I don't use, I don't use MDF I used to I made MDF patterns, when you turn it and sand it, the dust is really bad for you, horrible stuff. I made myself bad with it. So now I use proper wood, the dust and that's bad enough, but it's nowhere near as bad as MDF dust. So the glue and resin is bonded together with. I haven't got a great lot of woodworking here. I've got a little pen drill there, a fret saw. This is probably one of the most useful tools I have got. Uh, it's a cheap band saw. I bought it at a car boot sale. It was broken. I got it by next to nothing repaired it. I've got a nice narrow blade in. Probably the most useful tool I've got is this. This is a disc sander. I saw a friend of mine use one once and I just went out and bought one and that good. It's a 12 inch one. You get different grades of abrasive. Nice big heavy cast. It's a big heavy cast iron affair. This table is adjustable at different angles which is ideal for when you're doing castings. Uh, for making patterns because you need a draft on the pattern that's a taper to allow the, the pattern to come out of the mould what I mean by draft, that's a, a two piece steam engine cylinder pattern if you look closely at it, it's got angles on the taper angles called draft so when it goes into the sand like that it means it'll lift out nice and clean you don't put a, a big taper on 3 or 4 degrees but it is very important For the base, cut a bit off the plank. And I'm sure I can appreciate what that would do to your fingers, it doesn't even bear thinking about. Really is a good tool this. square corner what I do I make the pattern four and a quarter it's not going to shrink quarter an inch but I can machine it the machine it the size
four and a quarter. Yep. Eight buckler. This is one of the one of the good things about wood, you can stick it together with glue, PVA glue. Not as quick as welding, but right, using this PVA glue, you don't need screws or nails. The glue is actually stronger than the wood. A lot stronger. Make sure the surface is going to glue, it's nice and clean. That one's going to go flat on the end of there. It doesn't take a lot of glue. Put the glue on, move it round a bit. Feel it, it gets like a suction, it has like a suction effect. You slide it into place and it sticks. After about an hour or so, you'll be able to handle this quite roughly, which is just as well the way I grow my wood. There'll be fillets going here, wax fillets. Uh, Probably some core body fill, I give it a bit of shape, some contours. And basically we're, we're looking not too bad. Once again, a little bit of glue. Not too much. Messy bastard. Dirty. Slide it into place. Get like a capillary like reaction. That bastard sticks like shit to a blanket. Line them up. Just line them up by eye, it's not mega critical. Yeah, once it's done, it'll be able to get machined anyway. It's looking there. Not too bad. So we'll cut straight through there with a band saw, some fillets to go in, some tape to put on so it comes out of the, so we can get it out. I'll drill a couple of holes through there for some pins before I cut it in half. It's the easiest way of doing it, make, like assemble it and then cut it in half once it's, once it's done. The pattern stood up a nice and the glue's gone nice and hard. This pattern's going to be cut down there, that'll be the parting line, split line, but before I cut it in the half, I'm going to drill two holes in here, so I can put two pins in, so when you come to put it back together, it locates back together. So the pattern here I did for a steam engine cylinder, and you can see the locating dowels, so it goes together without any movement. I'm going to drill the holes on the mill machine, because I've got a mill machine I make as well. I'm treat wood like metal. I'm going to use 6mm pins to line it up, 6mm steel pins. Uh, I've got a 5.9mm drill in. I'll actually use a ream as well to get the worst the right size. Uh, I need to go in 40mm, 40mm deep. So yeah, just like machining metal, fetch it up with touches. There, zero uh, Z axis, drill the wheel 40 mil deep. I'm going to do it again to make sure. Yep, 
40 mil. And that'll do for a bit of wood. Do our zero, just touching. Thirty nine, So I put the remaster straight through now. Where are the adapters from? Oh, right, the three most to two most to one most. This is where having the having the riser in the middle column makes a massive difference. You need to do this freehand. But when you've got the machinery, you might as well use it. I don't know what speed to use for. For even mahogany. It's the bottom of the hole there. So I'll be using a couple of them. All I do, I'll put a little bit of car body filler in there and sand it flat. Right, let's see if it'll fit in the bandsaw. I've set the fence up on the, the table of the bandsaw so I can cut the pattern down the centre. We've got our dowel holes in right away through so I can put dowels in once it's cut in half. There's one nice cut, deep cut right down the centre. The blade's only about 20 thou wide, so I lost very little material. You see, it's a nice neat job. <laughs> see the dowel holes? I'll get the dowels and we'll try them in. Depth looks good. These are the pins I'm going to use 6mm parallel pins. Nice fit. Not too nice at the burst the burst the wood open, just nice. Let's make sure there's enough clearance. The pin's doing jam on this side. That's pretty good. Nice fit. You can see it back together. Yeah, good job. I talked yesterday about the draft on the pattern, the taper on the pattern. The pattern is going to be into the sand that way, so it's got to come out that way. So you want it smaller at this side, tapered like that. This taper on the pattern is allowed to come out of the sand. I've set the table at an angle, you can see the gap. Put the square on the bed, there's actually a gap on the bottom. Oh. 
cockpit. Hope you can see the taper on the taper there. Just a case of gluing bits of wood on and blend them into shape. I'm trying to think in three dimensions. That's glued on, and now I'll tell you, I'll be able to come and sand that. Some filler in here. It'll not be far away from casting. The glue's gone hard on that bit. I've sanded it roughly to shape. I've also cut out the piece for the where the gears go, like a banjo. And then I've sanded it, sanded the tape around. Unfortunately, the plywood's not really good quality, that gaps. What I'll do, I'll fill them. Uh, I'll use car body filler. Here's it, he's goes me up with stuff. If you can't get it off your fingers, that's all it's horrible. Like paste. Got a lovely smell. That would remind me of motor racing. Playing with fairback glass body shells. Just mix it a, a little bit, just as much as you need. Catalyst hardener doesn't take much, that's enough to set that off. What they reckon is, you have a lump of the catalloy, fill up paste the size of a golf ball, you need a lump of hardener the size of a pea to set it off. Especially this weather, it's red hot, it's warm in here, it'll go off quick. It's easy to apply, but it takes a bit of time to sand it off. But it is quick and cheap. But it used to be cheap. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fill in all the gaps around the side of here. All the splits and the plywood. Because you need a nice smooth finish. So it comes out of the sand cleanly. 